Fernandez Show is a talk show channeled spontaneously from source to edify and help raise the vibrations of truthers, starseeds, Christic alchemists, and others who have seen through this illusionary matrix into messianic consciousness by discussing hidden knowledge, higher dimensions, and manifesting so that we can shine our light for everyone to see and co-create the earth that we know we actually deserve to live in. Don't! I gotta go! I'm working on the show! Welcome everybody to the Joel Fernandez Show! I'm Joel Fernandez, and I'm just in the middle of tuning this good old baby of mine. Actually, just tuning that to A432 in Young's second circulating temperament. And I explained temperament in an earlier episode.
right, so we just finished tuning, and that actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. Well, it's only been about maybe an hour, hour and a half at the most. But yeah, um, why don't I show you guys just what temperament is and why it really matters. So when we're talking equal temperament, which is the way most modern music is tuned, we have an equal distance between all of these 12 notes. This makes an octave, and this is basically double the frequency of this. Harmony is based on the intervals between these notes, and you have a 2 to 3 between these notes, or it's supposed to be 2 to 3, and then this is supposed to be a 4 to 5, this is supposed to be a 5 to 6. But the thing is that when you take a 2 to 3 between the perfect fifth, and you cycle all the way down, If you add all of that up, you actually get a greater number than a double, a perfect double. That is, you could compare the ninth harmonic on one key to the eighth harmonic two keys up, which works fine for the first few keys. But if you do it six times, you'll get to what's supposed to be the original note an octave up, which should have twice the frequency. Except that our harmonic tuning method multiplied the frequency by a factor of nine eighths each time, and nine over eight to the sixth is not two. It's 2.02728652954 etc. If you tried harmonically tuning a piano using major thirds instead, you'd multiply the frequency by five fourths three times, or 1.953125. Still not two. Using fourths, you'd get 1.973, not two. Fifths gives 2.027 again, and don't even try using half steps, you'll be off by almost 10%. And this is the problem. It's mathematically impossible to tune a piano consistently across all keys using perfect, beautiful harmonics. So we don't. So because of that, you're left with a little bit of an extra piece in the tuning cycle. This cycle of fifths never actually closes. And what's left over is called the Pythagorean comma because these perfect intervals are basically ratios for the Pythagorean tuning. This is the sound and visual image of a pure harmonic third, an A and a C sharp. This is the tempered version, as played by a modern piano or guitar, clearly out of tune. This is a pure harmonic fifth, an A and an E. And the tempered version of a fifth, again, out of tune. So this is one of the reasons why I do not use equal temperament. It's because the color of each individual key is lost. And this is what the genius Bach and that guy was really a genius. In his series of pieces for the well-tempered clavier, he actually exemplifies each distinct flavor of each distinct key. Oh man, it's amazing what this guy was able to accomplish. And you can see this on a piano that's tuned like the way I tune mine, where each key has a distinct flavor. And if you transpose the pieces that he wrote for different keys, you realize that he really had an idea of the flavor of each key and what he wrote in each of those 12 pieces. So, so let's have a look at this when we play the first prelude in C and then transpose it to a different key. Check it out. So I'm first going to play this in the key of C, which is the original key. We'll see how that sounds and then we're going to transpose it. So that's the original key of C. Now let's transpose it to the key of F sharp, which is actually one of the brightest keys out of the 12. Mm -hmm. 
as you can see, it sounds completely different, and that's because of the differences between the keys. The main difference is the difference between the major third, which is we have the root, which is C, and then the major third, which is E, and that has its own quality. But when we go to F sharp, that major third is a bit wider, and it gives a brighter, kind of more joyous feel to it. So that's basically what equal temperament takes away out of music. That is why I tune not only to a circulating temperament where all of these keys are of different qualities, but I also tune A to 432. And of course, that's in harmony with the Schumann resonance and all of that kind of stuff. Pretty cool stuff. And I just had to get rid of some of those boxes that came in because I got a whole bunch of shipments getting ready for the new year, getting ready for new horizons and really taking this show up to a whole new level. But uh, with that out of the way, let's just get right on the road because I've got to meet some people. We're doing some musical projects right now and that's really taken off for me, especially in the last couple weeks. And I'll be sharing some of that as well in this show. But let's just get a move on show. Yeah, boy. And now the sun's low in the sky, so even the sun shades, man, they don't keep the sunlight out of your eyes. But it's pretty cool, you know, the way the sun and all of that rotates, and technically it's the firmament, but <laughs> this is what the calendar's all about, guys. The calendar's all about. And honestly, guys, I'm going to be taking a break from posting videos this week because we are on the seven days of literally when the sun crosses into Ophiuchus. And that literally is talking about a reset. That's the serpent bear. And we're actually resetting and regaging where we've been for the last year, reassessing all of our plans and trajectories, and really, you know, cutting the chase. You know, we don't want to be doing what never worked for us in the first place. We actually want to take on new potentials. That's what it's all about, these new potentials. And tapping into that kind of space just makes everything completely different. And once you start tapping into the realm of potentials, you start to see just what is potential, really. But guys, don't just look at me for the answers. Like, really, you have the answers. You are the sovereign beings. You literally are the ones capable of stepping into your own destiny. That's what it's all about anyway. So once you step into your destiny, then everything else will fall into place. Just because I'm doing it, that doesn't mean it's gonna just fall into place for you. You gotta take those steps. You gotta actually reassess You know what's been working for you, what hasn't been working for you, where you wanna go, what kind of potentials you wanna achieve. Really, if you just could snap your fingers right now and be living your best life yet, what would that look like? Take time, analyze the situation, really draft out an imaginal scene where you can actually start to visualize that from the end. Not getting there, from the end. So for example, if you want like a mansion, right? Just as an example, nothing wrong with that. If you want a mansion, don't imagine yourself like looking at a house and being like, oh, that's really cool. Like imagine yourself living in it. What would it be like if you had to take out the trash from that house every single week? Imagine that kind of thing. Once you're already in that end, that's when that end will manifest for you. That's how it works. Because you can manifest yourself looking at the classifieds, you can manifest yourself getting all the way up to the end, but as soon as you get to that end, something will shift and boom, it won't line up. So imagine from the end and not the midpoint. And imagine from first person point of view, meaning imagine yourself looking through your own eyes. Don't imagine yourself as if you're looking at yourself, you know, from a camera, third person perspective. Honestly, scenes can go really wrong if you do that. I know some guy that actually imagined himself in a convertible with this person that he wanted to marry. And, you know, he imagined everything vividly, actually did a really good job. But what happened in the very end, because he imagined it in third person, all of a sudden, he saw a postcard where she had married somebody else and that was the image on the postcard. 
that they were driving down the highway in a convertible and guess what he lost but he manifested that very scene so you want to do it from first person point of view and of course doing it as you're falling asleep makes it super vivid and once it's in that state and you fall asleep on it that's pretty much a done deal like you can do it during the day you can do it anytime I remember when I was still working at the blue box down on the prairie like I used to manifest days when you know I didn't want to work but I would manifest like really good days and a lot of those manifestations came true very very profoundly and I had fun doing it I had a really good experience even though you know I really didn't like that job at all but you know you can manifest be above and beyond your limitations and during the day whenever whenever that's the key you got to be constantly doing this constantly plugging away and constantly knowing that it's in your power to do so you are the sovereign being and because you're the sovereign being you can imagine whatever you want whatever you want literally whatever you want so don't take it for granted guys do not take it for granted know that you're sovereign know that you've got this and like I said if you could snap your fingers right now and be living your dream what would that look like take time and do some imaginal scene just a couple lines maybe talking to somebody maybe them congratulating you on your scenario and that literally is how to do this guys there's a whole bunch now that will be manifested as a result of me taking this initiative in my own life I'm going to be putting together a community where we can actually discuss this kind of stuff. There will be one section where we're going to be discussing the hidden meanings of scriptures. But there's going to be this other section where we're going to have manifesting workshops. And we're actually going to be putting it to the test. Like all you guys out there, you can join. And we can actually manifest these potentials systematically. Actually doing these scenes in a systematic way where we say okay if I do this this is gonna happen where like we can literally work on this together guys if you have problems like I can help you draft a scene all of this stuff man we are gonna take this to the next level and this is coming in the new year so stay tuned for that after Monday this week I'm not gonna post for at least a week we'll see how that goes because I wanted to take this whole week off and really do some reassessment but because of what's going on like I'm super busy and I still got stuff to do this week I still got stuff to do so as that's all playing out we're just gonna manifest through it and literally take it to the next level literally take it to the next level nothing is holding this momentum back and it's begun guys it's already I mean it begun long past last year but it's already underway guys get ready to really step up in your fullest potential that's what we're here to do that's what us light workers are here to do we're here to actually bring our fullest potential into fruition so that not only we can experience it but the world around us can we are birthing that utopia that fullest nature of what we've come here to be and because of that we literally have the potential to manifest above and beyond our wildest dreams whatever that looks like you start with your wildest dreams you start with the potentials that you really want to achieve but once you start realizing that you realize that there's way more there's way more and it just keeps on going because the universe is infinite source doesn't stop source is abundant source doesn't want to humiliate you and make you live in lack and poverty that's not what shalom is and it's funny that churchianity wants you to live in poverty it's funny that churchianity wants you to be all mediocre and broken and oh you know I have to be subdued so that my humility comes in place so that I know like I'm not in charge well actually awareness is in charge and because you are aware you have that same power flowing within you until you realize it Otherwise, it's just going to go on autopilot and literally cycle out of control because your autopilot is being fed by the physical circumstances rather than the internal potentials. When you tap into those imaginal scenes, when you take time 
and literally work to manifest those potentials as real in your awareness. Once you do that, you will realize that, man, this thing was beyond any of your, you know, like I say, wildest potentials. This thing was beyond anything you could have imagined through your ego. Anything like, for example, the mansion again. You want a mansion because you've seen other mansions, but do you really know the potential of a mansion that Source has for you? That potential? See, potential isn't downloaded through physical senses. It's downloaded through that heart space. Physical senses can't see, oh yeah, you know, that's a nice house, that's a nice car, you know, that's a nice piece of property, whatever it is. But beyond that, we can't actually imagine beyond that unless we tap into our heart space because everything else is limited by what we've seen, what we've downloaded, the data bank that our brains have actually harnessed through physical experience. Outside of that, we don't have anything. So when we tap into that space, that's what we can really manifest that above and beyond. I'm all about above and beyond, guys. You know me. Like, I don't stop just because the physical circumstances limit. In fact, those limits of the physical circumstances are a challenge. When I see a challenge in physical, I say there's something here that's tapping me into receiving above and beyond whatever I'm thinking is possible right now. And that above and beyond is what we're all about. That's what destiny is. That's what we're here to live out. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep moving forward guys. Just keep moving forward. Life is too short to take any steps back. But just keep moving forward and you'll realize that as long as you're moving towards your destiny, you will start realizing that destiny. You will start realizing it bit by bit. That's all it takes, bit by bit. Just chisel away at that statue bit by bit. And you too will realize that end result. That is inevitable. As long as you keep moving forward. Trust me, Bob. You won't get stuck if you just keep moving. That's what it's all about, guys. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. And even if you're stuck at a red light, guys, just because it seems like you're at a hiatus and nothing's moving, don't be dismayed. As long as you're making that incentive to move forward as who you've come here to be, as long as you're moving forward in that, even if it seems like you're caught on the red light, guys, you might just be like seconds off the highway, just waiting at the exit ramp to get on the highway. Just because you're not moving, you know, don't go off and take a back road and try to get there through the alleyways and everything because, you know, that might take you 10 times longer to get there just for the sake of feeling like you're moving forward. If you're at the red light, just waiting at the exit ramp to get on the highway, you'll be at your destination in a matter of minutes. So that's a bit of perspective as well too. As long as that intention is there, as long as you're doing the inner work, visualizing, keeping your mind on the prize, you're gonna get there. You're gonna get there. Don't take a step back. And the worst seed that you can sow to cut out that harvest is seeds of doubt, seeds of unbelief, seeds of lack. When you fall into lack, you actually have to manifest that state of being. You have to manifest that kind of harvest where you're at lack. But just know that you're on the highway, guys. You're on the highway. Before you know it, you'll just be like cruising in sixth gear. 88. Look at that, guys. 88. must have time traveled or something. But I am just going to eat some dinner and just chat with you guys. That's what I really like doing. And I'm actually going to be eating pretty much the same thing I made in last show's recipe. 
it's a bit different. Like I added celery and a couple different spices, but it's pretty much the same thing. Guys, you can just wing it with this recipe and that's what I love about it. But I'm going to get on eating and oh, right. I have to transpose some music. So I'll be doing that as I eat. Yeah, I have to transpose Joy to the World and O Come All Ye Faithful. So yeah, guys, this is Moose Score, and this is where I'm going to be inputting all the information for the music. And we're just going to speed lapse this thing through. Let's get this microphone pop filter out of the way. And uh, let's get right on it, shall we? I am going to watch the 11th hour. So yeah, guys, this is Muse Score, and it's just like a note typesetting software. It does a whole bunch of other stuff too, like output MIDI's, and you can have some real fun with it. You know, experiment with chords without, I guess, being able to play an instrument. But it is kind of tedious putting in the notes like this. But you know, it's good practice for when I got it. Put in all the notes for an orchestral arrangement for example which i will be sharing in the future guys so much has been coming through so much creativity like these videos the reasoning sessions the downloads all of that is but a fraction really the connecting with other people starting movements organizations communities and now there's going to be our community which is going to be starting up in the new year, <sighs> the new Gregorian year. But ultimately, after the winter solstice, guys, uh, in this next phase, which is literally the 10th year since the initial download. I can't believe it's been that long. But yeah, 10 years, guys. There's nothing new. This is literally the transition of the ages. That literally is what it is that literally is what it is so it's amazing it's amazing and we're all part of this you know we all came here for this specific time and it's funny when you meet people that are on the same mission as you you automatically know it you remember the very first time you met them and it just sticks with you there's something different you know i'm almost of the theory that you know there's us that are awake that are actually these light workers star seeds whatever you want to call it and then everybody else is an npc it's literally just generated by the matrix the experience is just generated by the matrix and ultimately that's why manifesting works that's why we have power as manifestors otherwise it wouldn't work if we weren't awareness and awareness is a creator or like the projector of physical reality through the film strip which is our state of being and then the projection on the wall is the experience of physicality if that wasn't the case we would have no control in manifesting but i manifested typesetting this music and here's the arrangement transposed to this key so yeah now that that's done I go on to the next and of course I'm just copying the sheet music just copying the sheet music and honestly this kind of notation is pretty dry if you ask me I get pretty creative and I can do some pretty amazing arrangements but this is just for the sake of transposing the notation but I also have a few Christmas selections that I'm putting together and it probably is going to be more in line with a play or, you know, I don't want to do a ballet or anything, but like a musical performance with like actual stage play. Honestly, I might just rewrite something completely different, but this project that I've been doing really has like a deeper part to it than just the music so there will be a play and I'm probably just going to arrange like 12 songs in order and arrange them for orchestra but we'll see how that goes I'm, that's obviously not going to be ready for this solstice but 
no matter. We just keep on moving forward, guys. Just keep on moving forward. There's no point not moving forward. There's no point doing something else that will slow you down. Really, think about it. This is destiny we're talking about. Ultimate destiny. So don't quit on your dreams. Don't quit on all those visions, all those downloads that you've had. Because ultimately, you're here to realize those. You're here to actually embody and experience those. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? That's what it's all about. And that's what they don't want you to do. And that's why you have to go to school for 12 plus years. And that's why they give you religious institution doctrine dogma that doesn't empower. But anyway, this is the original key. And it's transposed to this, which honestly, guys, sounds pretty dry. Let's listen to a real arrangement of mine. This one's the ever popular Happy Birthday. So yeah, that's that, guys. Like, I have been pretty busy with a whole bunch of other projects. But before I sign out for this episode, guys, I'm going to give you the color of each of the different keys as I just tapped into and felt that essence. And these are going to be in order from brightest to dullest. So first, we have the brightest key, and I mean the brightest key, which is C sharp and C sharp major relates to breakthrough and elation. And then after that, we have A flat major or G sharp major, which is announcing the entourage of a royal dignitary. Like I said, these all downloaded to me in visual form as well as the feeling. And each key has a distinct flavor and it's just like something you can't unhear once you hear it, you know? It's like you know red is red once red is red. Anyway, moving on. After G sharp, we have F sharp. And F sharp is like floating on high clouds. Just like floating on high clouds. It's actually a really amazing key. But then right after that, we have two keys that are tied on that level where there one is not more bright than the other and these are the keys of B and B flat so B has the feeling of a relief like a tropical breeze and B flat or A sharp is the feeling that you've won you know not like a game show but literally the simulation it's like the heavenly graduation or like welcome home it's kind of funny talking about this, but this is just the way I see it, you know. And then we have E flat major, which represents home, peace, tranquility, harmony, balance, basically shalom.
Yeah. And then after that, we have the key of E major, which refers to a rich ruler sitting in majesty on his throne and just giving wealth away, just giving out, pouring out his wealth. And then after that, we have F major, which just kind of represents a tranquility that's not calming. It's just almost like a nothingness in a sea of infinite waters. And then we have A major, which represents a sentinel standing along the night shores of the ocean, moonlit. Pretty imagery. Pretty cool imagery, huh? And then after that, we have D, which feels like water fountains. D major, like a life source on a summer day. Just kind of like that steady fountain. And then after that, going down the scale to the dullest of the major scales, we have C major, which is even more empty feeling than F major, but it's very grounding. It just brings you back to that energy. And G major, the last one, has the smallest distance between the major third. And that just feels like a relief, kind of like a resurfacing when, you know, like the sun breaks through the clouds or the first dawn. It's kind of like that, very peaceful, but very calm and just not overly exciting or jubilant. And after that, we get into the minor triads. So even these go from a bright flavor for a minor scale to an even deeper, darker, sinister flavor. And the brightest is B minor. B minor is like the feeling of getting stormy or clouds gathering. Then moving down, we have E minor, which is like that rich ruler of E major, but he's being tormented at the night by evil spirits and no one's there to help him because no one can relate to him. Then after that, we have A minor, which is kind of like underwater torrents. You know, it's really dark. And then we have F sharp minor, which has the feeling of being escorted by good angels, protecting angels through the abyss. Then you have two keys that are tied at the next level, which is C sharp minor and B flat minor. So C sharp minor has that feeling of realizing a major game changer. And then B flat minor has a feeling of betrayal of love. Then we move on to D minor, which is a villain among the guild. Right among your own people, there's this villain. Your most trusted people, right? Then after that, we have G minor, which is kind of like a, oh, what's that? Like a startling behind you in a dark alley. And then we have G sharp minor, which is, you know, the revealing of a great antagonist in a regal evil hall. <laughs> kind of dramatic, but anyway. After that, we have E flat minor, which is like navigating a dark forest. Then we have C minor, which is drifting helplessly, aimlessly on a cloud swept by the wind. And finally, F minor, which has the feeling of just emptiness of voice, kind of like non-existence. I don't know. That's what I see when I hear these different keys. So I just thought I'd share that, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. This has been a bit of a different Joel Fernandez show, but then again, aren't they all? That's just the way I see it. Guys, there's so much more to reality when we tap into that right hemisphere of our brain. We really start to manifest things from an intuitive, causal perspective. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing. And moving forward, guys, there is great potentials that's just unfolding like you wouldn't believe so stay tuned join the community when it starts up because there's going to be some awesome stuff going on yeah literally manifesting earth 2.0 good things are coming good thing so that being said guys have an amazing solstice i won't be posting reasoning sessions for the next week at least because i am re-gaging and reassessing a whole bunch of things stepping it up you know we're entering a new level and 
We've got to conquer those new devils. But we got this. We got this. Ain't nothing the blood of Christ can't handle. But with that being said, guys, I'm going to sign out here. Stay well and seize that shalom. Really seize your blessings because it's your birthright. That's what we're here to do. We're here to manifest our best lives yet. So with that being said, I'm going to sign out here. I'll check you in the future, in your future, in your destiny, living life 100%. Agape. Salam. Namaste. Khatep. Hey guys, Joel's back with an...